as we delve into the history of the wild hog in America, we uncover a story that is both fascinating and complex. These animals, also known as feral pigs or wild boars, were not originally native to the United States. Rather, they were brought over from Europe by early colonizers in the 1500s. These colonizers had several reasons for bringing hogs to America. One of the primary reasons was for food. Hogs were a valuable source of protein that could be raised relatively easily and provide a sustainable source of meat for the colonizers. In addition, hogs were known for their adaptability to new environments and ability to forage for food, making them a valuable resource for early settlers. Hogs were also used for hunting purposes, as they were often released into the wild to breed and establish populations that could later be hunted for sport. Today, wild hogs can be found in almost every state in the U.S., with Texas having the largest population. There are currently an estimated 6 million wild hogs in the United States, with over 2.6 million wild hogs in Texas alone. These animals have adapted to their new environment and can thrive in a variety of habitats, from forests to marshes. Wild hogs, also known as feral pigs, are a menace to many. They cause damage to crops, spread diseases, and can even pose a threat to humans and other animals. Attempts have been made to control their population over the years, from trapping and hunting to aerial gunning, but to no avail. These highly adaptable creatures can survive in a variety of environments, from forests and grasslands to wetlands. As omnivores, they will feed on a wide range of food sources, including plants, insects, small animals, and carrion. Their keen sense of smell and nighttime activity make them efficient foragers, using their strong snouts to root through the ground and locate food. Hogs play a significant role in the food chain, both as prey and predator. They are a primary food source for many large carnivores such as wolves, bears, and big cats. But they are also opportunistic predators themselves, hunting small animals such as insects, rodents, and reptiles. Wild boars, the male counterpart of wild sows, will roam their territory looking for females in heat. Once a wild boar finds a receptive sow, he will inseminate her with his semen. After the wild sow becomes pregnant, she will seek out a safe and secure area to give birth to her litter of piglets. Unlike domesticated hogs, wild sows will often leave their litter of piglets to forage for food, returning to nurse them periodically. This allows the sow to feed herself and ensure the survival of the litter. Once the piglets are weaned, they will join their mother and other members of the sounder, the group of hogs, in foraging for food and seeking shelter from predators. Sounders can range in size from a few individuals to over 20 individuals, with females and their offspring typically forming the core of the group. Male wild boars are typically solitary, but may join a sounder during the breeding season. Understanding the behavior and social structure of wild hogs is essential to managing their population effectively. Despite numerous attempts to control their numbers, the resilience and adaptability of these creatures continue to pose a significant challenge to those seeking to manage their population. As the population of wild hogs has grown, so has the need for domesticated hogs for meat production. Today, hog farming is a major industry in the United States with millions of hogs raised each year. However, breeding hogs for commercial purposes is a complex process that requires careful attention to genetics, nutrition, and animal welfare. So, let's explore how hog breeding has evolved over time to meet the demands of the market. Domesticated hogs are bred under controlled conditions, and their breeding practices are different from wild hogs. Domesticated hogs are raised for their meat and are often bred for specific characteristics that are desirable for meat production, such as size, growth rate, and meat quality. In contrast to wild hogs, which mate naturally in the wild, domesticated hogs are often bred through artificial insemination or selective breeding. Artificial insemination allows breeders to control the genetics of the offspring and can help to produce healthier and more productive pigs. Selective breeding involves choosing the best animals to breed based on certain traits, such as meat quality or size, with the goal of improving the overall quality of the herd. Domesticated hogs generally have higher litter sizes than wild hogs, 
On average, a sow can produce a litter of 8 to 12 piglets, but some well-managed breeding programs can result in even higher litter sizes. Hogs play a significant role in the ecosystem as both wild and domesticated animals. In the wild, they are considered to be ecosystem engineers, meaning that they significantly alter their environment to the benefit of other species. For example, hogs root in the soil for food, which helps to increase soil aeration, turnover, and nutrient availability. This can be beneficial for other plant species and even for soil-dwelling animals. However, when wild hogs are introduced to non-native environments, they can cause significant ecological damage. As such, their presence in the United States has had significant negative impacts. Wild boars cause over $2 billion in damage to crops and property each year, with damage to agricultural crops accounting for approximately $1.5 billion of that total. In some areas, such as Texas, wild boars have been estimated to cause over 50% damage to crops like corn and soybeans. These voracious animals have a seemingly insatiable appetite and can quickly devastate fields of corn, soybeans, wheat, and other crops. They root up the soil, damaging the root systems of plants and making it difficult for crops to grow. Additionally, they trample and consume crops, leaving behind a trail of destruction that can take years to recover from. Hogs can also damage irrigation systems, which can cause water to be distributed unevenly or lead to leaks that waste water. Moreover, their rooting and wallowing behavior can cause soil erosion, which can lead to sediment runoff and water pollution. All of these factors can have a negative impact on the environment and the surrounding ecosystems, and ultimately affect the availability and quality of food produced. The issue of wild hog overpopulation in the United States has prompted action from various government agencies and organizations. One approach taken by some states has been to allow hunting and trapping of wild boars. This approach has been effective in reducing wild boar populations in some areas, but it can also be challenging due to the animal's intelligence, adaptability, and nocturnal behavior. Hunters and trappers must be skilled and experienced to successfully catch wild boars, and they may need specialized equipment such as traps and dogs trained to track and hold wild hogs. Many states require hunters to report their wild boar harvest to track population trends and determine the effectiveness of hunting and trapping efforts. Fencing is another commonly used method to prevent wild boars from accessing agricultural areas. High tensile electric fencing is the most effective type of fencing for this purpose, as it is able to withstand the strength of wild boars. The height and strength of the fence are important factors in determining its effectiveness as wild boars are strong and can jump over low fences. Therefore, fences should be at least three feet high and made of sturdy materials. It is also worth noting that wild boars carry and spread diseases that can be transmitted to domestic livestock and even humans. One such disease is swine fever that can cause severe illness in domestic pigs and has led to devastating outbreaks in various parts of the world. The spread of these diseases is a major concern for farmers and public health officials as it can lead to significant economic losses and public health risks. Therefore, it is important to take measures to control the wild boar population and prevent the spread of these diseases. Some states have implemented programs to control wild boar populations through fertility control methods. This involves administering contraceptive agents to female wild hogs to prevent reproduction, which can help reduce populations over time. However, this approach can be difficult to implement on a large scale, as it requires capturing and treating individual animals and may not be effective in areas with large and dispersed populations. As we come to the end of our journey exploring the wild hog, one thing is clear. There is no one-size-fits-all solution to the wild hog problem in the United States. But a combination of approaches may help manage and reduce wild boar populations and mitigate the damage they cause to crops, native wildlife, and public health. These animals have proven to be incredibly resilient and adaptable in the face of changing environments and human activity. Whether we view them as a valuable resource or a pest, there is no denying that these animals have left an indelible mark on the landscape of America.